Hi, my name is Paul Mason, and I want to speak to you a little bit about a couple of ideas that have been around for a long time and debated, in which science finally provided a solution. And the first of those is the geocentric model of the universe. And that is the idea that the Earth is in the center of everything, in particular the uh, solar system as it was known in ancient times as the entire universe. Aristotle and Ptolemy came up with the idea that is shown uh, here on the left that the earth is in the center followed by the moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and then a sphere of stars out here at the edge. And a couple of things that we need to consider about this model is that the Earth does not move in this case. The Sun, the Moon, the five known planets, all the stars travel around the Earth every day. They would take slightly different times. The Sun move, would move around the Earth every 24 hours. The stars take 23 hours and 56 minutes to travel around the Earth in this model. All motions are you know, along perfect circles. And uh, the planets, in order for certain complicated motions of the planets that were known, Ptolemy had to make uh, corrections or an addition to Aristotle's original ideas in terms of developing an actual mathematical model for uh, the orbits of the planets. And he developed the idea of epicycles, which um, are that the planets move along these small circles called epicycles, and the epicycles themselves orbit the Earth. Now, the alternative to that is the heliocentric model, which originates from Aristarchus in ancient Greece, but uh, Copernicus, by writing about this in his book, he began a revolution that we know of as the Copernican revolution of science in science because he was able to really uh, examine this in detail and um, people following him read his book and ultimately became convinced that the heliocentric model is the correct one. And that is the idea that the sun is located at the center of the universe, or as we think of today, the solar system. The sun in the center, followed by Mercury, Venus, the Earth, the moon orbiting the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and a ring of stars very far out in space. And um, Copernicus established the order of these planets in the correct manner. And, uh, but the challenge was that people had to come to realize that what they feel in their everyday perception uh, is not exactly what's going on. The Earth is moving even though we don't feel it. It's moving in two different ways. It spins once every uh, 23 hours, 56 minutes. It orbits the sun once every 365 and a quarter days. The moon travels around the earth. Here's where this was a similarity between the two models and that uh, it orbits and moves around the earth every 27 and a third days taking a little longer, 29 and a half days to go through its cycle of phases. Planets orbit the sun and the moon orbits, moons can orbit planets. And so the Earth in this case is uh, surprisingly not unique. When we look up at the sky and we see the planets, these lights in the sky, we see Jupiter and Venus and Mars, Occasionally, we could see Mercury and Saturn. Those planets 
are uh, not, not really much different than stars when we look at them up in the sky. However, the idea that the Earth, which is where we live here, could be actually such a planet like the ones we see in the sky, or maybe even more significantly, that those planets we see up in the sky are like Earth, that was a startling discovery, and that's a discovery and a, a, um, a testimony of the power of science in the ability to figure out this difficult question. So, uh, the Earth is not unique, it's a number, it's a, one of a number of planets, and uh, ultimately Kepler solves the problem mathematically and Isaac Newton comes along in a couple of centuries and solves it from a physical point of view by seeing that gravity is the ultimate description for how these planets and the Sun uh, move together and operate in the solar system. So to give you an idea of some really sensible reasons why people supported the geocentric view, we can look at these. The, uh, these people were not uh, dumb, but they did not have uh, all of the information that we have later on with the development of the telescope especially to solve the problem. In particular, they uh, could argue if the heliocentric model is correct, then the Earth moves in to these two different ways and it spins and orbits the Sun, but we don't feel like we're moving. So this is a very strong argument uh, how all this could happen. Maybe if the Earth was moving, birds, they would fly up away from their nests up into the sky, they would come back down, the earth would have moved, and they wouldn't be able to find their nests. This would be uh, uh, an argument of, for the earth just doesn't seem like it's reasonable that the earth could be moving, especially not two different ways, spinning and orbiting the sun. Number two, if the earth moves, then over the course of a year, stars would shift in position. So as the Earth would move around the Sun, we would be able to look at stars from different points of view, different angles. This is an effect called stellar parallax. This uh, was carefully observed for and the effect was not observed. It was not observed until after the invention of the telescope. If the heliocentric model is correct, then the Earth is not unique as a planet. It's hard to imagine lights in the sky are really worlds like Earth. Venus is a very beautiful object to see in the morning or the evening sky, sometimes called the evening star or the morning star. And it's spectacular, especially when the moon is nearby, but it doesn't uh, make any kind of common sense that it is the same as our very similar as a place that we here, live here on, uh, namely the Earth. And uh, going that stretching a little further, our human ego really prefers that we uh, are in the center of the universe. This is something as we imagine, um, unless you can point it out otherwise, it's the most sensible and logical and comfortable way for uh, us to think as being in the center of the universe. And finally, if we take a look at the 